Cool. So welcome, everybody. Um, we are super excited to have you all over here um, at our webinar on Creating Pulses, really the ins and outs of a pulse. Um, we're excited to learn with you today and uh, looking forward to this journey. So we're going to first go and introduce ourselves. I'm going to quickly introduce myself and then I'll pass it over to my team. Um, so my name is Ari. I am the head of education over here at Kelvin and um, looking forward to learning with you all today. So pass it on to Val. Hi, I'm Valerie Coffey and it's so great to have you with us. I am one of the customer success team members and we love getting to work with you and partnering with you on your work with Kelvin. And I'm going to pass it to Jill. Hi, I'm Jill Albrock, and I am part of the customer success team as well, and I'm excited you're here. Thanks for coming. And my name is Justin, and I am also uh, one of the customer success team members, and I'm here to help you all. Pass it back to Ari. Great. Thank you so much, team. It is so awesome to have the Kelvin team supporting us here today. And um, if there are any questions along the way, please feel free to post them in the chat in the Q&A session. We will have a dedicated slot at the end for questions, but um, the wonderful folks on our call are here to help and assist you in any way in any way they can. So um, before we get going, we wanted to do a quick little check-in. Um, and the other day I was actually watching a video by a professor named Jonathan Hart, and we can post um, the link in the chat over here. And he spoke about how social media is negatively impacting our students and ourselves and um, all our mental health. And I found this quite fascinating. So um, I wanted to ask those, if you wanted to put it in the chat, what is the longest you have gone without your cell phone? And I'm going to throw it over to Val to ask you that question, um, put you on the spot over here and uh, let us know what's the longest you've gone without your cell phone. Ooh, I don't know. It's a, uh... I mean, it's so much a part of our daily lives anymore that uh, it's probably not longer than a few minutes uh, just because we use it for so many things. But with social media in particular, I did take a break from um, Facebook, which ended up lasting for about two years. And I just recently uh, started reengaging with it and finding I didn't miss it all that much. And I'm finding I don't, I still don't check it every day. Like it just, it kind of lost its hold on me. So I guess two years. How about you? Wow. That's awesome. Uh, I, I wish I could say that I, that I did that, but I'm, I'm trying to take a bit of a cleanse at the moment. Um, but I'm actually lucky every single week, uh, my Sabbath comes and it's 24 hours with, without technology. So I get to put it away for 24 hours, social media and the hustle and bustle of the world. Um, but if anyone would like to share in the chat um, before we move on, um, when was the long, what was the longest time you have gone without your cell phone? So, um, <laughs> exactly. Thank you so much for sharing, Stephanie. Um, a few hours when my daughter borrows it to FaceTime her friends. That, that's convenient, having uh, having your, your children take it away from you. <laughs> that's great. And uh, Justin, definitely taking le leaving it upstairs in another room can be super helpful. So um, we appreciate that. And that's something maybe to ask your family, your students, whoever you're at, whoever is around you. Um, that that that's really awesome. So um yeah, a great resource and something to think about. So from that, I think we're all warmed up and let's begin. So today we are going to focus on three main goals. The first goal being learning how to create a great pulse with questions which drive action. So often when we come and we create a pulse, we don't often think about the action that we want to take from this, but we want to teach you today how to actually, you know, think about creating action. Number two is learning how to assess the needs of your schools and districts. We understand that we speak into school leaders. We understand we speak into district leaders. We want to ensure that you've got the tools to assess the needs of your school and district. We're going to provide you with a really, a really simple template to try and help you out with that. And lastly, we're going to learn how to replicate this process in the future. So this whole process that we're going to be speaking about is, is super scalable. It's something that you can replicate and something that hopefully you can take to your teams and move forward with in the future. So now the first thing which we want to do is we want to get into the right mindset. 
and understand the reality of change. Whenever you're collecting data from your students, from your staff, whoever it is which you're collecting data from, you know, often I think many of us educators are givers. We want to, you know, kind of solve everything right away. But the reality of change is it's slow and it's hard and it's an arduous process. And what we want to do, we, we've kind of adopted the motto of go slow to go fast. And especially with the work that we're doing over here today. We want to take it slow. We want to be really intentional about the questions that we create in our assessment of our school or our district. And then what happens is once we've got that and we've actually got a bit of data, we can things will go really quickly and change will happen. So that's the mindset which I think we should think about um, before we you know, kind of jump into this work. And whoever you're working with, whichever team you have, tell, go slow to go fast. Let's slow it down before we can move. On that note, I'm going to pass it over to Val to talk about the importance of your first step of gathering your team. Yes, and I, I think this is such an important thing. And sometimes we feel like there's, you know, it's hard to add to other people's plates, but really thinking about who should be on your team as you're starting this work and making sure you have a diverse team so that you can hear multiple voices, multiple perspectives. And um, we also, you know, want to make sure that we're thinking outside of maybe you know, administrators and teachers may be thinking about including people like bus drivers and para pros and people that are on the ground seeing students and in different um, viewpoints than maybe, you know, we're seeing them in the classroom and uh, and maybe even including a few students into it to, to get some pers perspectives from them. Uh, they're going to give you valuable input as you're starting your plan, and then they're also going to help you with being able to think through some action steps when it's time to take that step of your process. Um, so just thinking about who should be on the team and the voices you um, maybe need to be tapping into. 100%. Thank you, Val. We really mm -hmm. appreciate that. And um, definitely, if we're able to build that strong team, we can really do good work. So right now we're going to focus on our strengths and weaknesses template, the SNW strengths and weaknesses template. Um, in the chat, we're going to post one of these templates for you. Now, this template is easy to kind of replicate. You can do this on a Google Docs. Um, we've just built in a template for you here today um, to, you know, kind of have the resources that we have. But really the aim of this template is it's going to help you narrow down your options for your pulse. We've seen so many people come to us, so many districts and schools come to us and say, oh, we don't really know where to start. Um, you know, we, we kind of want to change everything. As we mentioned, we need to have that go slow to go fast type of mindset. And so we're trying to help you as the Kelvin team narrow down the thinking, narrow down your assessment of what needs change. And this will help inform your data. The last thing which I'll say in this is use observational, to, to, uh, use observational data to guide your thinking. What we want to do is use our experience as educators, use our experience as people in the classrooms, use what we are observing to actually inform the work that we're going to be doing. So with all in that, with all of that in mind, we're going to begin. So right now, as many of you will see, we're on our strengths and weaknesses template. And again, as we mentioned, this is going to help us understand what needs work what we're going to focus on, who we are going to focus on with regards to our pulse and how we actually going to create change. So Val and I are going to try and model for you what a conversation would look like. We're going to take a step back into our classroom and school days. Um, and we are going to try and fill in some strengths and weaknesses of our school, of our district. Um, and this is how we think that, you know, potentially a conversation that you would be having could go, you know, maybe could go similar to this. So I'm going to start off um, jumping into my, my, putting my school cap on, putting my detective cap on and saying, Val, what do you think is one strength and one weakness of our school? Okay, well, um, you know, we've really been working on connectedness here at school of, of students feeling connected. And I've been observing students as I walk down the hallway, as I'm looking into classrooms, at lunchroom. And um, it seems like every student has a friend. You know, I'm not seeing kids kind of by themselves. Um, so I would say that every student has a friend is probably a strength um, as an outcome of some of our work. And for a weakness, uh, we've also been looking at attendance and tardies. And uh, 
we, we do have a tardy issue, but it's been kind of interesting as I'm digging into it. It seems like it's mainly happening with sixth graders and uh, still digging into why that might be, but there, there seems to be something going on with our sixth grade. So I, I'd like to get to the root of that. How about you, Ari? What Fantastic. do you know? Fantastic. So before I answer, I want to just take a moment to reflect and, you know, to see what we wrote, what I wrote down over here that this reflects your opinions and your thoughts. Mm -hmm. So the first thing which you mentioned, Val, was every student has a friend, um, you know, kind of just to think through that. We often see students walking together to recess, um, mm -hmm. you know, in pairs, in groups. Um, it seems like people have their, those social groups. We don't really see students wandering around by themselves. Um, I think that's that that could be quite positive and that could be something that we need to look at. And um, I love what you've told us over here. Our sixth grade students are tardy. You've got really specific. And we have heard some teachers complaining about that. So, um, you know, when we think about the specific teachers that this is impacting and also the specific students, and um, that's going to really help us think through this a little deeper. So um, I appreciate that and help us inform our pulse. Um, yes. Yeah, so what, what I noticed, and I'd love to hear your thoughts on this, is, you know, we got a whole group of new students in our um in our school in, in the beginning of the year. And now we're about six months through. And what I've seen is they've they've acclimated really well to our school. Um, they seem to feel cared for, they seem to be happy and thriving. And maybe that's something, you know, we, we focus on, maybe that's something we look at, but that's a definite strength. Mm -hmm. Um and maybe a weakness, something that I've been observing, is our teachers seem a little bit burnt out coming back from winter break. You know, I, I haven't seen them be energized. Um, maybe it's the cold weather that we're experiencing that's kind of got their mood down. That could potentially be it. But these are the two things that I've noticed. And I'd love to hear your thoughts on those, um, if those resonate with you. Yeah, I, I think the... Uh... The new schools feeling seen and cared for. I love the way you worded that. Um, kind of goes along with that whole connectedness work that we've been working on. It's just to, you know, whether it's existing students or new students coming in, trying to help them feel connected um, and find their place. So totally agree with that. And that's exciting to see. Um, and I have noticed that too with teachers. They they, uh, th th there seems to be a struggle there. They just don't have the energy that they that we're used to seeing in, in a lot of our great teachers that we have. So yeah, it'd be interesting to figure out what's going on with them and how we can support them. 100%. And um, so thank you so much for sharing, Val. And just for the sake of time, jumping back into presentation mode is um, we we filled in the next two for you um, just to kind of think about our school's a happy place and also having reports of cyberbullying. So, you know, what now that we have narrowed down these strengths and weaknesses, um, we don't have the urgency or the tendency to say, hey, we want to fill every, you know, we want to go and um, solve everything. We can take a look at this and say, what's really pressing and what do we know how to solve? Mm -hmm. So we're going to focus now on two of those strengths and weaknesses in our pulse. We're going to focus on every student has a friend. This is something we want to understand. And, you know, we've made an assumption and we want to go test that assumption. And, you know, with the weakness, our sixth grade students are tardy. Now we want to go and focus in on our poll survey and we want to understand specifically, you know, now we know who to ask. We can go specifically ask those sixth grade students. We can understand um, their specific take on this. So we've got uh, the stages set for our polls. And before we jump into actually the pulse creation, um, which we're not going to do in the Kelvin system, we're going to do outside and we're going to provide some resources for you if you need to learn how to do in the Kelvin system. Um, but we're going to first get Val to speak to this important point. So Val, take it away. Yeah, this is so important uh, to avoid those blind spots because it's so easy. Like we just in our, our scenario that we just did where we can actually start taking action on an assumption or a belief and actually miss the whole root cause. So it's so important to reach out and ask for the, the voices of, a, of the people involved and get their feedback to really understand what's happening so that we are focused on the root cause of the issue and not just what we're thinking is the issue. So we don't wanna miss anything. So it's important to, to gather that. 
Thank you, Val. And, you know, we're going to speak to that a little more practically later um, in, in a couple of slides time um, when Val speaks to this um, very practically. So we're going to move on to our actual polls. Now, often we get asked how many questions should be in a polls. I can tell you that from our data and our research, we try not to do more than 10 questions. We see a, a dip in student engagement. So we typically you know, recommend the amount of questions that it will take for you to actually understand what's going on and to take action and that you feel is not gonna overwhelm you. We've decided to do five questions over here and I'm gonna break them down one by one. So the first thing we're gonna do is have a relational question. In my mind, this isn't done enough. Relational question would be something like this. What was one highlight from your winter break? This is an opportunity to actually get student buy-in and to get them engaged with us and to build a relationship with our students. When we've gone and asked these type of questions, these open-ended questions before, we've got incredible answers. Like, what was one highlight from your school year to ask at the end of the year? What was one highlight from your, your, your holiday? These things are from your vacation. These things really help us get into the mind and understand what's going on with our students. And because they're on the ground, they're able to actually provide us with real information and real data, which can help us make change. So... Just from a question like this, you can get a whole lot of insight. So first of all, that relationship question, let's build a rapport with our students. Let's show them that their voice matters. Question two, we're going to focus in on our strength. What we're going to do is we're going to understand, hey, is our assumption about our strength actually true? So if you remember going back to it, our strength was every student has a friend. So we're just going to jump through. And so what we've done is we've said, I have at least one friend at the school that really cares about me. There are all questions like this in our question bank ready for you to use, but we are going to go in and, and, and test this out. This will be a like at scale, so simple yes, no, um, strongly agree, strongly disagree. You can go put it on any one of those scales, or you can use our question bank to do this automatically for you. Um, but this is the way that you can do it to actually test this hypothesis, test this assumption that we've created, and you know, go and see if this is something that's um that that we need to focus on. So um, or that's actually true. So that's question two. Question three, we're going to focus on those two weaknesses. So the thing with the weaknesses is again, we want to go and try to solve everything, but we've focused on one weakness, and that weakness was the tardiness, specifically with the sixth graders. Now, many of you will know that in our system, we can go specifically ask the sixth graders these questions, or you can actually get, you know, a data from the whole school, but it's really up to you. So you can see over here, question three, I feel it is important to come to class on time. So what we first want to do is we want to actually test that assumption that we made. And Val's going to speak to this a little more practically um, in a bit, but um. I feel it's important to come to class on time. We want to understand and assess, hey, do the students actually believe that this is a value of theirs? Do they want to come on class on time? If no, then that's something we need to deal with as a root cause. If yes, then we've got to dig deep and understand, hey, what's going on? Why aren't these students coming to class on time? Why are they tardy? And if you focus on question four, we've tried to go a little bit deeper. Are there barriers to you getting to class on time? We want to understand what are those barriers um, and address them immediately. Now, again, after I do the fifth question, Val's going to come and speak back practically to question three and question four in a real life example. Lastly, over here, and this is something which we're trying to encourage as Kelvin, is a character building question. So a character building question would be trying to get students to reflect on their values. You know, this is an educational principle which we want to engage with, which we want to, you know, promote. And our character building question is, what is one thing you have done or can do to include new students? So we've gone back to, you know, even though we haven't focused on it too much, that new student space is we just want to understand what is one thing students have done. So an opportunity for either them to refer them to either reflect and engage with what they have done and seeing how they have been kind. And these type of questions, you know, getting them to think about it, that you don't even need an answer always, just getting to them to reflect our higher order questions and they're super important for our students' growth. And then the second part of the question or the alternative is, or 
can do to include new students. We are getting them to, to, to take agency to include these students to make our schools better and kinder places. So this is our Pulse survey. We believe that you're going to get a lot of great information from this. And I'm going to throw it over to Val just to speak to a real life practical example, focusing on question three and question four, that weakness and what they found. Okay. Yeah, it was very interesting. Uh, I worked with a building uh, that this actually was a problem. Sixth graders were having a difficult time getting to class on time. And as they kept digging into their data, they discovered it was like class period after lunch, which is where the most tardies were happening. And so as they dug in and kept asking questions and trying to figure out what is really going on here, uh, they discovered that it was a traffic flow and intimidation issue. So as the sixth graders were trying to get back to their class after lunch, the seventh and eighth graders were a stampede trying to get to lunch and evidently hungry stomachs prevail. And um, so they were, they were, uh, you know, the sixth graders were the younger grade in the, in the building. And so they were a little intimidated to kind of be assertive and push their way through the crowd. Uh, and there might even have been a little bit of intimidation, you know, in things being said to them or, you know, jostling, things like that. But they were, they were being a little tentative. And so as a result, they couldn't get to class on time because there was this, they were swimming upstream basically. And, uh, and so the, the school looked at it and realized they could do some adjustments in the bell schedule for when kids were actually supposed to be getting to lunch or class and when the other class is coming to lunch. And then they also, um, so they worked on that hallway flow that was going on and the problem was solved and tardies went down quickly because they figured out the route. It wasn't that they didn't wanna be there, it was that they were physically having difficulty getting there. So um, always important to, to get that clarity of, of what is really going on and asking the students themselves, we'll, we'll give you that with question four. Great, thanks so much Val. And that's just so practical and so real. And uh, some of the ways that you can use the data to, as we said, take action, make that yeah. real change. So appreciate you sharing that. Um, we're at the end of our content right now. So if there are any questions and answers, um, oh, we'll, we'll provide the answers, of course. <laughs> but if there are any questions, please feel free to um, ask in the chat. And while people are thinking or typing, maybe we can share some resources with you all. Um, the first resource being how to create your first pulse. This is from our help docs. Um, and you can go and create that first pulse, get going. Um, we've also got a Kelvin data guide. This is a new resource, which is constantly being updated, but it's a new resource kind of helping you through these steps of creating a pulse, looking at your data and taking action. So we are trying to provide you with simple three-step resources to ensure that you have got the tools to make a difference and um, and really, you know, kind of impact your school or district in a in a in a really great way. And lastly, um, you can schedule a time with your customer success manager, um, Val, Justin, and Jill, all on this chat. They are extremely knowledgeable, all have experience in education um, and are here to serve you and you know help help make this work um and you can always reach us at hello at kelvin.education we're always here to serve you and help you out so we're going to jump back if there are any questions before we sum up um feel free to type in those questions or put up your hand and potentially we can bring you on the screen otherwise we'll give it a minute or two and then we'll wrap up um yeah so i'm not seeing any no, not questions seeing yet but Maybe we articulated ourselves so well, Val, that there were no questions, <laughs> if only. Yeah. Yeah. Still, re re still reflecting. Fantastic. We'll give it another 30 seconds or so if anyone's got any questions. Uh, otherwise, we'll wrap up and do a little summary and finish off. Oh, it looks like Thanks, maybe, Justin. maybe Justin has somebody that.
letting people know they can un unmute if they need to ask a question. Great. I think for now, it seems like we're good on the questions. So always feel free to reach out to us, as we mentioned, at hello at kelvin.education. Um, as you can see over here, we're always here to support you. And just to summarize real quickly is a reminder, real change happens slowly. We know it's tough. We've all got big hearts and want to make a difference, but it takes takes time. And uh, number two, your team matters. Having that team, having those unique different voices, that different levels of experience, um, perspectives really makes the world of difference. As Val mentioned, adding the bus driver can really be that change because they are seeing things that, that you might not be seeing. Um, build your puzzles with intention. Think about the action that you're going to take from them. You know, try to think with the end in mind, start your pulses with the end in mind because um, that's where you'll actually get the change. And listen to people on the ground, kind of similar to, to number two, but listen to your students, review that data and use it to make real change. So that's us today, a short, quick webinar. Um, we really hope that this has provided you with some, um, some things to think about. Um, and again, we're always here to serve you. We appreciate you're spending your time, the work that you're doing, and uh, we'll stick around for another two minutes or so um, if anyone's got any questions or thoughts, but thank you all for being here.